This pitch breakfast video is brought to you by Spangler and Agins. Great. Well, raise a show of hands. Who loves craft beer? Yeah. All right. Good. So, shocker, the bearded hipster is going to talk to you about beer. Um, my name is Mark Iafray. I'm the founder and CEO of the Beer Exchange. It's an online marketplace where craft beer drinkers can find and acquire any beer that they want. So, if you're like me, there we go. All right, if you're like me, uh, you've exhausted the options on your local shelves and you want to try something new. And a few years ago, for me, that was this beer, brewed by The Alchemist out of Waterbury, Vermont. And the problem is, like most craft breweries, it's got a really small distribution area. So unless I live right around there, I can't buy it. So I started talking to some of my friends who had had this beer, how they went about getting it, and I was introduced to this world of craft beer trading. It's a network of enthusiasts who buy, package, and ship each other beer that they normally can't get. And if that sounds like a lot of work, that's because it is. And to be really honest, beer trading is a huge pain in the ass. Uh, at least it was before. So I got frustrated enough that me and my co-founders, one's over there, we decided that we were going to make something better. So in February of 2014, we launched the first version of the Beer Exchange, which was a custom-built beer trading platform that was designed to make trading easier and more uh, accessible to people. And it sounds strange, but people really, really liked it. Uh, we grew really quickly by word of mouth, and before we knew it, we had reached 11,000 users. We had the most sophisticated product on the market, and we'd accomplished all these really awesome things. So we're, we're really proud of where we've come to this day. But what we really want to do is provide the same accessibility to beer that traders have, but to anybody. So what we've been building now is the second version of the Beer Exchange, which is an e-commerce platform. What we're going to be doing, in addition, excuse me, in addition to trading, is allow our users to now buy beer directly from brick and mortar retail locations right from inside the beer exchange. And the way it works is pretty simple. Any store that wants to sell on our platform creates an account. They set up their inventory, they list their prices, and then they, talk, and then they uh, set their shipping rates. And now, when any user on the site decides to search for a beer, they're able to see not only who has it for trade, but to see what stores are selling it, and if they want, purchase it directly within the site. So the existing solutions that are out there, this is pretty much what you're looking at. Now, they're not only not built for craft beer, but they're difficult to manage. And the most important problem is all these stores have to then brand and market themselves. And this takes time and money, but more importantly, it's fundamentally misaligned with how craft beer consumers go about finding beer to begin with. So what we're able to do with leveraging our network of users already is we're able to tie in all these stores who are desperate to get in front of customers with all the users who are actively searching to try and find their beer every day on the beer exchange. So obligatory giant macro market slide, right? The most important thing to understand is that craft beer is huge. Uh, it's doubled over the past three years to be a $20 billion market, and that is at the expense of macro beer. Consumers are shifting their taste preferences. You've got multiple revenue streams. Right now, we are focusing on uh, the retail stores, but already we have a freemium model with uh, advertising revenues coming in. The plan is to build out our e-commerce solution and generate revenue that way. Now, the best part is that we've already got this built. So we we're doing a pilot launch here in Charlotte and also one in San Diego. And the plan is to do a phased regional rollout that we're going to be starting now and uh, putting out through the rest of the year. This is what we're asking for. Money is kind of the missing piece of the puzzle right now. In order to execute at the right time, we're looking to do a $500,000 series seed round that's going through a safe, which we'll talk about later. Um, we're capping that at $3.5 million. And this is how we're going to use those funds. Majority is going towards development, specifically building out and scaling the product and also expanding our mobile presence. We're also going to be doing a lot of marketing, split basically between direct-to-consumer marketing and direct-to-retail slash brewery marketing. This is the team that's going to make it happen. Um, me, the guy with the beard, obviously. Um, my specialty is in product development, product design, and marketing. Uh, you've got Ritesh here in the audience. He's got 15 and a half years of uh, software development experience. And then you've got Luke, who's been doing, he's heading up our uh, business development and uh, sales going into the future. Uh, he's out in San Diego, really great guy. We have a uh, partnership with Cultured Media. The largest uh, they own the largest home brewing site on the internet, among other sites in the craft beer and wine space. And what we're really looking to do is, in the same way that Uber's become the largest taxi service without ever owning a car, we're looking to become the largest marketplace to buy beer without ever having to hold on to a single bottle of inventory. And as exciting as all this is, it's really only the beginning of what we can do because once we've been able to capture that market, we're in a prime position to actually move into some other places within the craft beer uh, three-tier distribution system. 
So that's my time. Thank you so much, and looking forward to continuing the dialogue. Ironically, both of these panelists have very close ties, very close ties to Vermont. So that was a great <laughs> slide. Your attention was there. Panelists, <laughs> what do you say? Yeah, the Hetty Topper is awesome. I'll be up there this summer. I'll try to get you some. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll wait online with all the other crazies. Um, yeah, so that was very good, very tight, awesome. A um, few things I think I was, um, my, my mind's. Uh, reaching for. One is it feels like you guys have been doing this for over a year, maybe a year and a half. Mm -hmm. The 3.25 ask with all the terms on the round I think is awesome. If you're asking for that kind of money, I would also like to see like what, what, what's gone into this thing? Like is sorry, there, the, oh the, sorry, the 500,000 cap. Yeah, that's what I meant, the 500 cap. <laughs> not not 3.5. Yeah, yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. The, the, the 3.5 cap on the half a million for the, for the deal, like how much has gone in? What's the cap table? Just a sense of like, it feels like this has some legs underneath it. So yeah. if I'm going to write a check, I'm thinking, okay, like what else has happened here? How much money has been raised to date? Just basically understanding. If the answer is we haven't raised, it's all sweat equity. We've been bootstrapping. That's cool too. Just more specificity around what came before this. Sure, sure. I can answer that. So there's four stakeholders right now. Um, me, Ritesh, co-founder, and Luke, the other co-founder. And then we have one, uh, I guess, super early seed investor. He actually gave us about $22,000 um, back before we are even out of our initial beta. Um, and he has uh, a smaller portion of the equity, but he's, um, that's actually uh, this company, Culture Media, the CEO of that company invested in. So, so use that to your advantage, right? Like you guys are scrappy and you've gotten a lot done with however much money and resources. I think you can use that as a strength um, versus I was like, I wonder if you know, like this has been kind of a restart or like it just didn't, didn't feel like I knew everything. Um, and then the other question in terms of the pilot, I think I wanted, I'd love to know a little bit more Right, it's I'd like, like to tell you more about the yeah, right. So, so I know you only had five minutes, but that might get me a little more like fired up on okay, this thing's ready to go, right? You know, it's yeah. like being kind of being a customer or in the business. Like, I, I would say like, wow, Chris, a good bottle. Like, I, I trust him as one of the. He's like he knows beer, right? So if he's working with you, yeah, I'm like that much closer to writing a check as an investor, and therefore yeah. I'd want to hear more about what is Chris doing, how are you proving it out, where is that with good bottle, that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, a lot of people want to be doing this with us right now, but we have to start um, start really small. So we do have Chris here at Good Bottle. He's been he wanted to have it yesterday. Um, <laughs> uh, we're we're starting the private beta right now. Bottlecraft is a really huge store out in San Diego. We're starting with one store in each, but we have about probably two to four stores in the Charlotte area that want to be involved in the basic rollout. Um, and there's stores kind of all over. We've been talking to people in Florida, New York, uh, San Francisco, all over the place. I want to hear more about like, here's what the pilot with Good Bottle is going to prove. Chris wants to put on, I don't know, this much in inventory. He thinks he can sell X. Because like, I don't know his business super well, but I've talked to him about his business. Um, he's, he's seeing it as a revenue enhancement, right? Taking him into e-commerce, plug and play, like that yeah. could be amazing. I'd love to know more about what the goals of that pilot are. Yeah. Um, that's all, just more specifics on it. But other than that, that was a great pitch. And it's an awesome idea, too. So congrats Thank on you. that. Yeah, I would echo that. Uh, you made really good use of your time. Um, and, you know, you were well prepared. You know, you hit all the major things that I'm looking for, you know, in a five-minute pitch, you know, sort of intro. Um, I think uh, to echo Mark, um, you know, it's obviously you've had some history and I would love to understand that, you know, how you went from three guys with an idea yeah. to where you are. I mean, 11,000 users or something like that. Yeah, we, uh, we got, I'm not gonna say we got lucky because I worked too hard to call it luck. Um, but we, uh, we, we grew really, it's, it's funny because people talk about like a viral product all the time and it's just kind of like, they just throw that word out. But the, what we built is really is because who, people who are trading, they, they want the other friends to be on it because it makes everybody's life easier. So a lot of it grows by word of mouth. I mean, we've had a 15% month over month growth, growth for now a, I, a year and a half. That's so. what I want to hear okay. about. Yeah, you exactly. know, it's uh, because investors, what they want to see is, okay, this is what you've done. You know, yeah, of course, you're going to tell us up and to the right. Yeah. But what I want to see is back here. How, show me how you're at a point here, not, you know, you're like, well, nobody really signed up that month. You know, it's like, if, if you can see this, then I can see the path to this. And, um, you know, th these are these are great numbers. And, and granted, you were totally time constrained and whatever, and I get it. And the, the, But I would dig into 
I think the most important thing in almost any of these businesses is customer acquisition and customer acquisition and growth in this totally crazy crowded market. I mean, everybody's competing for my attention when I look at my phone. And, and you've had some success here. And, and I would really, you know, just one layer deeper on how, how that and, sh and showing a path. But overall, really, you know, good presentation seems like a good idea. Um, you, you've definitely had some success and, uh, and you've got good, good passion for it. So Thank good, you. good job. Questions? Yeah, such a good point. So for those of you who don't know, some beer you have to drink really fresh or else it goes bad. Uh, some beer you can actually age for years or decades. So it really is up to the store owners. They want to make sure that their product is fresh. Um, we have stuff built into the inventory management system that we have that lets them add in details. So they can put the bottled on date, they could have an expiration date, they can put in notes on how long it's been there. Um, but really, at the end of the day, we know that if you walk into a store and you buy something off the shelf that was canned four months ago and it's past due, you won't go back to buy it. So it's in their best interest to make sure that their product is fresh and going out in a timely fashion. If you brought the network and you have a distributor like in Oregon and yeah. then they made some bad buying decisions when they're trying to sell the product, they're not expecting necessarily someone to, they're not relying upon that person walking back into the store again. Exactly. No, that's true. And that's a really good point. Um, that's. One of the reasons that we, one of the ways we get past that is we get to select in the beginning um, the stores that we want to have involved in this, and that's why we're going with the ones that we've chosen. But ideally, the kind of free market takes care of itself in terms of those. Sure. Mark, question: Have you noticed your customers transitioning from exchanging beer with people online versus just buying direct? There's always going to be a need for trading because some beer is out of production; you can't buy it. It's a 15-year-old Cantillon, right? So you, you just sometimes you just can't uh, buy, so you trade. Um, we noticed a lot of people are trading for a beer you can easily buy off the shelf. But that's just not in their distribution area. Uh, we've polled our own users. We've talked to other users. They're all very willing to buy beer through the site. Um, they've told us that, which is one of the reasons why we were so like gung ho about doing this. One more. Sure. What's your revenue streams? Revenue streams? Yeah, I didn't get to talk too much about it. Um, right now, for the user side, we have a freemium model. So a premium subscription is five dollars per person per month that just has some additional features and functionality. Uh, we also have money off of advertising that we do right now. So we're not in the black just yet, but we're very close, actually. Um, and then the other side of it, uh, I do have a slide in here. Can't seem to get this to go. Oh, come on. Anyway, it's, um, it's, uh, we have a tiered pricing structure. So you start with like the basic plan, which is $5 a month for retail stores, and it goes all the way up to 80. And then we also have a transactional cost per monthly revenue. So you might be paying $5 a month and then paying back 6% of your monthly revenue. Um, and then that percentage goes down as your monthly fee goes up. And that's obviously where we're, we're charging the stores for that. So it's two sides of the equation. We're predicting about 70% or so to be the, uh, the e-commerce e revenue and about 30% to be the, uh, the user side revenue. Mark, thank you very much. Thank you.